Alright, Walter Russell again, Secret of Light. Gonna go a little bit more into the magnetic space geometries and hopefully can present these in such a way that, that, that it makes sense. Um, so this little reading is gonna be on the radial universe, uh, the birth of wave fields, and of uh, the cube sphere, magnetic space geometry. So here we go. The radio universe, the entire mechanical principle of nature by means of which its light illusions of motion are produced is the consequence effect of such radial extension. Because of it, the seeming multiplication and division of the universal equilibrium into opposed electrical pressures of gravitation and radiation, which form the foundation of the universe of change, are made possible. And here you can kind of, you can see, I'm pointing to it, the symbol of power extended from rest to rest. So this symbol, if you look at it, it's, it's a point of stillness in the center, which expresses motion. So stillness births movement. And it does that by moving itself in opposing directions of six ways. So north, east, south, west, and then the diagonal. And you can picture this filling volume or creating volume or even basically creating space. That's what magnetic space geometries do is they're a form in which matter is birthed from. So out of stillness births motion and motion moves in six directions to create a wave field. And in this case, the six directions, which is a hexagon, a six-sided figure, is a cube. A cube is the fundamental space geometry of all form. You know, actually, the cube and the circle. And I'll go into that a little bit more in just a few minutes, but the cube and the circle are constantly interchanging with each other in order to birth form, matter, and motion. So the way to see this is, is that a sphere is pulling itself inward to actually create a cube. And a cube is always bulging out its sides, expressing itself outward in order to become a sphere. Okay. God's imaginings extend from rest to rest in his three-dimensional radial universe of length, breadth, and thickness to become the stage of space for his imagined radial universe of matter, time, change, and motion. Okay, so there's another picture here. You can just see it. It's just a circle with the four directions, actually the six directions, if you can imagine this in 3D. And then an outward pushing force from, from the center of stillness outward and a recirculation of that energy going back into itself uh, so it's opposing itself and in that opposition from stillness to motion and then back to stillness you create equilibrium and he says it here as extending from rest to rest so that's stillness to motion to stillness so that's basically rest to rest in this process you create you know the three and four dimensions of length breadth and thickness which also create matter, time, change, and motion. Points of rest further extended to other points of rest form three reflecting planes of still magnetic light which are at right angles to each other. From the center of these three mirror planes of zero curvature, God's givings are radially projected to six opposed mirror planes for reproductions, I'm oh sorry, for reprojections as re-giving to unfold and refold the forms of God's imaginings in the curved electric universe of his desiring. Okay, another figure here. It's just moving each one of these figures, these symbols, is just basically the next step. So these six lines 
of expression become planes. East, west, north, south, and so on. And they all come from the center point of stillness. And so you can see them here creating these, these six-sided planes together. And you can see it forming a cube from the inside out. And those planes act as mirrors because all motion is, is light waves. And so those light waves reflect off of each other over and over and over again. And what appears to us is motion. And then now you can see the full cube. You can see the whole sides of the magnetic space geometry. And this is the basic of the cubic wave field. Each cube is connected at the points, at the endpoints, what they call cathode planes, to another cube. And space is just completely filled with these cubes into infinity. And each one of these cubes harnesses uh, a curvature of reflected mirrored light, which that curvature is a sine wave or an S or just a wave. That's why light moves in waves. And that is reflected in each cube through infinity. And so the way to think about this is that light technically doesn't actually move. What happens is, is that each cube replicates itself next to itself in another cube. And each cube is basically perfectly still because motion comes from stillness. Okay, hopefully that, hopefully that comes through. Reading on. The desire of God to give of his love is manifested in projected action as an outward explosion from a centering point of rest acting as a fulcrum. The desire to re-give is simultaneously radared back from every point of its progress to refold the unfolding action. All action in nature is forever disappearing into a mirror of its own image of equal potential. Every projected action in nature which is simultaneously radared back as a reprojected reaction is sequentially repeated as a similar echo from its wave field boundary planes of zero curvature. Okay, all of that was exactly what I just said a minute ago. I was just trying to say it in very, you know, layman terms. So, it's basically saying that each cube is regenerating itself cube by cube throughout all of space and creating uh, the illusion of motion, which we call curvature or light, light waves. All action in nature are outward explosions, slow actions of growing things or fast action of released dynamite or atom bomb. Conversely, all reactions are inward explosions. Actions unfold formlessness into form. Reactions refold form into formlessness. Actions are the basis of radiation. Reactions are the basis of gravitation. And the way I see this is basically it's just this inward, outward, uh, energetic, rhythmic exchange. And this is constantly going on, which creates balance or equilibrium. And this is the way nature appears to our senses. And, and this is basically gravitation, which pulls inward, and radiation, which expels outward. And this whole process is constantly going on and on and on to create balance. And this is what I was saying earlier, how a, a circle will pull in to form a cube, and a cube will push out to form a sphere or a circle. That's constantly happening.